This isn't new, I say, leaning back in my recliner, eyes closed, listening to the rich voice of Nina Simone. Feeling good was released in 65. Keep listening, Hildy says. The combination of her faux German accent and her sweet voice is adorable. She's perched on the edge of a footrest, bouncing with excitement, her curly blonde hair somehow defying gravity as it bobbles around her head. Nobody delights in music more than me, except for maybe Hildy, and her taste is impeccable. I missed nearly 40 years of, well, everything, and she loves exposing me to tunes I haven't heard yet. It's our Sunday afternoon tradition. Just the two of us. A couple of beers, speakers turned up, turntables spinning. Usually, but not today. Hildy is playing her first track straight from YouTube, which is one of the weirder things about the 21st century. Not the technology, but what people are willing to upload for the world to see. You can watch 24 hours of a Pop-Tart cat, rainbow flowing from its backside, flying through space to an admittedly catchy tune. Fun, for a few minutes. But I think the 24-hour track was created to help black op interrogators break down prisoners. They don't ruin feeling good, do they? I ask, nervous about what kind of abomination Hildy might have dug up online. Hildy leans in close. Shut up. The bass kicks in, the familiar tune bringing a smile to my face. Haven't heard this song in a long time. The music builds toward a crescendo, but there's something different about it. A snare drum, tapping to a fast tempo. I squint, unsure about what to expect. Hildy's smile spreads, her eyes flare wide, and then it happens. The bass drops, and I'm surrounded by a cascade of sound that projects all of the original song's chutzpah, but it's intensified by a mixture of electronic instruments and modulation that perks me up out of my seat. Hildy laughs with delight, but I can't hear her. I'm focused. I'm in love. The music transforms my lazy Sunday in an instant, making me feel like a goddamn bad bitch. The good kind. I'm ready to slap the universe's ass whoops, and shout, Giddy up, Flamingo! Flamingo being the name of my fictitious horse. Maybe it's a white horse that's been eating too much red algae, like those freaky-ass pink dolphins that live in the Amazon that can turn their heads and look at you the way dolphins do when... Thinking of dolphins reminds me of big apes' situation, and the subject nearly squashes my music high. He was taken to the future like the rest of us, but something went wrong. He found himself merged with one of the Russians that made the trip with us, his face fused to the man's well-forested chest. It was a nightmare existence that ended when we returned to the past. He was made whole again, but his body, his mind... I shake my head. Nina's voice beats back my woes. For a moment, I'm lost, just feeling the ebb and flow. Then my thoughts drift to the future. A thousand years forward to a timeline that no longer exists, controlled by the Union, where self-expression was forbidden and the past had been erased. Tears well up in my eyes like a damn anime character. This is my favorite kind of music. Not the instruments, or the voice, or the creativity. It's the transformative nature of it. Sound captured, shoved into the chrysalis that is the human mind, and emerging as emotion. Hildy leans away from me, looks a little confused, points to her eyes, and I understand. I've got an alien life form living in me, a blue urophid from the future. They normally look like erect, blue, bioluminescent cucumbers, but this one is inside me, a phrase I will never say aloud. It makes my eyes glow blue when its experience of the world through me becomes intense, good or bad. Chewy was the first to notice the phenomenon, while we were dry-humping on the couch, too lazy to move things to the bedroom. Killed the mood. Who wants an alien creeping from inside their boyfriend's eyeballs? But she's gotten used to it. The Eurofit and I are kinda one in the same now. That's what I tell myself. It's less mind-blowingly freaky that way.